Let's make your book into a success. The Right Way Podcast will help you write, market, and publish your book. Write like a professional, publish without fear, and create a following so you can become a number one best-selling author. This is your host, Lise Neven. Hi, everyone. First of all, I am so sorry for not posting an episode in what seems like eternity. What happened? Well, I was being very stupid. I am, well, I went to Belgium to visit my parents and it was a weekend of hell. So basically what happened was that um, we arrived, my boyfriend and I, we arrived in St. Pancras and it seemed, it turned out that he just completely forgot his uh, ID card. So he couldn't go <laughs> onto the Eurostar and into Belgium. And um, well, some things happen and blah 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 and my journey turned out to be a journey of about like seven or eight hours um so i was i, w- I was pretty fucked <laughs> um and then when i when i got back home I, I really confidently stepped into the majestic you know eurostar and well i kind of forgot my laptop so my parents had to send me my laptop and it took about three weeks um, for my laptop to actually reach me again um, so I was a bit fucked <laughs> I'm sorry for my language um, but uh, yeah my laptop came back from Belgium and found me again so I am really happy today I am interviewing Philippe Meersman and Philip is um, well, he's a poet, and he organizes a poetry festival in Brussels. And I'm asking him everything about this poetry festival. And as we in Flanders, in Dutch, say, I am going to get the, how do you call it, like, worms out of his nose. The pire uit zijn neus halen. That's Dutch, by the way. Um, but uh, hey, I, I hope you enjoy it. It was really interesting, because... As well for me, um, I learned a lot about poetry. I learned a lot about how all these, you know, conventions and poetry festivals, how they actually work and how you can be a part of the poetry festivals. So if you want to know more about this, and hey, if you want to want to contact Philip and, and, and maybe network a bit, be my guest. Philip is a really nice guy and um, I'm pretty sure that he won't kill you or bite you or whatever. But um, yeah, enjoy the episode and don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to um, visit my blog uh, since I am going to upload a new complete blog post on... I have no idea what I'm going to upload but um, you can see on Wednesday I guess. Um, and don't forget to review my show on iTunes. Scott, that was a brain fart. No, um, I really hope you like it. And here is Philippe Meersman. Welcome back to the Right Way Podcast. Busy, busy, busy with all the last stuff. And when? When's the festival day? Uh, next weekend. Next weekend already. Wow! Congrats. So that's ah! excuse me. Um, <laughs> yes, it's rather um, help. Uh, no, it, it 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 goes, but it's sort of last minute type of things. People sort of saying like, "Yeah, I want a room, a single room." You know, the practical type of shit. That uh, are there a lot of people that are interested in, in in this stuff? Because I know when I was living in Belgium. Uh, I, I went to slam poetry things in Antwerp, and there weren't that many people around. No, but we we do a lot of stuff in the in public space, uh, in the public space, and we try to have synergies with other type of organizations. Uh, like, for instance, we do a workshop at the University Hospital in Jet, and then we do also something with their staff at their uh, lunch hour. So that's why we have extra people. And uh, uh, so we, we have more people due to the fact that we do things on um, 
other locations and stuff like that more than that we um know how to say um than we would do if we have this normal slam or performance poetry events eh? because slam events already have more audience than if you go to like sound poetry and so when you have still 30 or 50 people coming to a slam event although that it's it's, it's getting more and more eh? Mm-hmm. There are more and more people arriving that if you do sort of like sound poetry events, if you then have 10 people coming, then you're already a successful organizer. Yeah, because um, I always went to the Speak in the Aesels in Antwerp. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it was considered one of the biggest events, although there were only like 10 or 20 people, including yeah. all the people that spoke that night, so... Yeah, no, but that's that. The, it 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 hasn't changed so much. It hasn't changed so much. So sadly, or I don't know. I mean, <laughs> if it's sadly or, mm. uh, um, well, yeah, it it is. Um, yeah, it is what it is. But like I said, with trying to do things like we have a show. Uh, we do now two evenings last year, one evening in the planetarium, so which is sort of like within the dome of this planetarium where normally you go and see the stars and the planets and whatsoever. We do then a sort of poetry thing, um, uh, uh, poetry production, uh, where then we also have the projection of the dome or where we have an, um, uh, an adjusted projection of the dome uh, related to the poetry that is read, a little bit surrealistic or whatsoever. So in that sense, we can have other audiences. So when we try to 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 add audiences via this type, my yeah, by organizing the readings and stuff like that in not so commonly known poetic. Um, uh, dance, but more into the public space and in, in, in unusual places. So last year we had, with also the exhibition that we did at Wils, um, mm-hmm. which is sort of like Muka in Antwerp, uh, but then in Brussels, but without a known collection. Yeah. So we, 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 we realized like 3,500 visitors to the festival. Wow, that is a lot. That is, especially for poetry, that is hands down yeah. very good. So thanks. So we try to, to do at least as good this year, <laughs> which will be very difficult, of course, because, I mean, we, we, we came from a, a festival of like 100 unique visitors, 200 over the whole... Uh, weekend, eh, but we, we could sort of identify 100 unique visitors like you do on a website um, eh, because people come back and stuff like that. So, and then to go then to a festival with, with like an opening and a closing uh, thing uh, with the, this art book fair um, and with the synergy that we had with Wills, where also Rosas was dancing. Um, I was doing a special performance, and then we, 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 we had a lot of people passing by that wanted to come and see the exhibition anyway because they were there. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, and that helped us. So we hope that we will have a little bit the same now. Eh? And what made you um, organize the fest in the first place? Um, what was the thing that brought you to being like, okay, we're going to organize a slam poetry festival. Um, well, it, 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 it's not per se a slam poetry festival. So I, mm-hmm. we need to sort of, it's a performance poetry festival or mm-hmm. an experimental poetry festival. So we, we, we try to, um, to put all these different type of experimental forms into the spotlights. Uh, why? Um, and this year, because it's 100 years of Dada, it's especially yeah. sort of performance poetry. Um, and there is no exhibition. Uh, but why? Because when I, I'm already, since last century, it's definitely already that long, um, that I'm uh, doing poetry performances. And on the one hand, I had this sort of, I, I, I have always struggled um, 
to sort of be taken serious as an artist um, on a stage. Mm-hmm. And next to that, there are a lot of sort of Belgian or low country sports at this moment that are doing very well internationally. And you have like Luc Fiedens, for instance, with his collage and visual poetry. He's, he's big in, it, in Italy with solo exhibitions and whatsoever. Um, you have also historically a lot of people that are known um, uh, like Paul de Vry, for instance. Yes. Uh, uh, you have the, the gang of Krikri uh, with Yale, uh, Meander, Maya Yander, Helen White, um, who have had a lot of influence uh, on international uh, poets. Uh, I consider myself also somebody, I've been in Argentina and Israel, I've been translated in Chinese and and Japanese and whatsoever. So we, there is a lot of, of this sort of performance poetry and also uh, take slam poetry and uh, uh, also with that, uh, with people that have done a lot of things abroad but were not really recognized in Belgium. Mm-hmm. And and for me, this was sort of like, yeah, let, let's get not only the, the Belgian people doing these, these forms of poetry together, but also bring some representative people uh, to Belgium. Mm-hmm. And then in 2014, um, uh, Three Rooms Press uh, published a book, a poetry book of mine, uh, This is Belgian Chocolate. And uh, we wanted to do a preview of This is Belgian Chocolate, together with one, uh, with that year's uh, Mantena um, um, anthology of neo-Dadaistic work. And so I said, like, yeah, why don't we do this somewhere around about the 11th of uh, September? Um, and so, yeah, okay, let's do a preview. And that's sort of like practically the 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 the, the basic of the basis of the the program in 2014. The first edition started, and yeah, it has grown above uh, the fact that it was sort of like a preview of my book and and their anthology. But the thing that still is a continuous type of thing is the fact that Mantena. Um, uh, of Three Rooms Press will have a feature in um, one or, or more occasions during the festival, and there is always something uh, interesting about uh, a newly published book or something um, experimental or, or, or people uh, doing for the first time a, a certain performance or something like that. So we try really always to have some premieres or of avant-premieres or something special for the festival. Because you're really rooted in, in the whole poetry thing. What, what do you think are, are the big genres or the big trends right now? At this moment, um, well, we, we're in, in, in Belgium and in Europe in general are a bit behind um, on, on the trends that are there in, in the States, for instance, most probably. Um, but we are getting sort of more and more into sort of the, the, this hip hop um, multicultural genres, sort of a lot of African influence, but I mean like real African influence, people with double nationality who, have, who are partly Congolese or, or have an African heritage within their family links uh, that bring a lot of... of Sort of, um, yeah, more, more, um, sort of sounds, um, and and movements and sort of rhythms uh, from uh, from Black Africa into into the the, the, the scene, a lot more critical um, mm-hmm. towards uh, society in general. Um, that's sort of like what what the new trends for me are. Uh, and also, like, yeah, okay, the the whole sort of uh, discussion on uh, refugees, on um, on veils and burkas and 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 whatsoever. So that's definitely uh, very in. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for the rest, yeah, it 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 
it's now bit by bit being recognized as a genre, which is already uh, a lot further than it was like uh, even five years ago. Eh? So now slam poetry or performance poetry in general is already seen as, a, as an art form. Before that, it was just sort of uh, a poetry reading. Eh? So the book as such... Uh, still was the the the, the sumum of um, the 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 ultimate um, uh, thing of poetry was a book. What needed to be sort of a book, and you as a reader should sit somewhere in a corner with a small mm-hmm. light and sort of have this most intimate uh, type of thing with the book and try to be within the page of the poets whilst now more and more um, uh, poetry on stage is recognized as, as, a, as, a, as a poetry forum, although that also there there is a lot of discussion on the fact, is it performance in the sense like, is it more like art in which performance uh, art is part of, or is it more like forms of theater um, because it's sort of like uh, an oral uh, speech of something that has been written down, mm-hmm. uh, or it, does it? Is it still literature? So I mean, and this is not just a genre question, but it's um, it's it's a very interesting question in the sense like. Um, in Europe, there is a lot of financing going on uh, via government. And certain genres or certain art forms have different organizations that, uh, and different rules of getting funding. So there lies at this moment sort of the very difficult question. Mm-hmm. What is performance poetry and where do you situate it? Is it music even or is it theater or is it literature or is it art? Mm-hmm. And since poetry is always evolving, it's always reinventing itself, because that's what it's doing with the whole slam poetry thing. What, do, do you think there is a revival of poetry? Because I had, um, I had a bit of a feeling that poetry was going out. And now, because slam poetry and, po- and performance poetry in general is so in, do you think that there is a chance that it will be better know with the big public or will it still be something that's going to stay underground? Oh, very difficult one. Um, Being a pessimist, sometimes I think it will stay underground. Mm -hmm. Uh, But my optimist self sort of hopes definitely that, that it's become more known. To be honest... There are sort of like, for instance, in Antwerp, uh, you have this uh, city poet uh, that every two years changes. Mm-hmm. Uh, it uh, is now, uh, um, uh, well, it, 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 it was until last year, Stein Franken, sort yes. of guy starting up with uh, Spreek the Easel. So there was already more sort of into performance poetry, but the stuff is also, poetry has become more and more part of the public space due to uh, giant poems being uh, um, painted onto walls or onto uh, ceramics or whatever Um, and with all these different stages uh, popping up in different bars and different youth houses and stuff like that and poetry being more cool even amongst youngsters I mean it's not something that uh, the nerd in a corner of his uh, of his uh, bedroom uh, uh, does, but it's something more um, a form of of free speech, uh, even mm-hmm. and 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 of letting not just emotions but also uh, view points of view onto society and on and on daily life and stuff like that. So I think it 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 becomes a sort of um, modern version of of speakers' corner. In a way, and when you look around to to the poets and 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 to the performers around you, what would you say that it's the common denominator between them that would make them 
popular or would make it make them get a lot of gigs or uh, performances? Ooh, a good uh, it it, it uh, get um. Getting not only the attention of the audience, but also sort of touching the audience. Uh, you have somebody like Samira Saleh, who who um, uh, who slams also in in English, and who sort of when I saw her for the first time, I think it was her second performance that she did. She was sort of picked up in in a uh, for a festival. And it, she really sort of she had a presence, and also the, the the content of the message that she said was was almost universal, and and I think that's what what makes good poets getting gigs. The fact that what you say sort of touches people, it puts them, and it makes them think. But on the other hand, it has a Oh, which is a nasty word, perhaps it has a sort of entertainment value. Yes. As, as for instance, you have you look at a drama, movie, or 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 at a piece of theater uh, that is sort of definitely uh, uh, like Ibsen, which is uh, you you don't feel good when you leave the theater, but but that's what it's about. It, it's sort of like it touches you, it touches the core of you, and 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 you don't sort of drift away with your thoughts mm. you, you 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 catch the audience and you keep the audience um with you which is very difficult yes i can imagine and do do you think it's easier for poets or or harder um than for um authors because i know the the whole market for poets is smaller but there are also less poets than there are, for instance, writers or authors, as you can see on Amazon. What do you think? Do you think that authors have to market themselves more, while um, poets can go more on merit? Or do poets no. also have to market themselves really hard? I think that at this moment there is a lot of um, uh, publishing houses here, because Dutch is a, is a very small language group, eh? so... so mm-hmm. Uh, here, definitely, authors have um, have a bigger market value because for publishing houses, they will sell definitely more than 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 poets. So they put a lot more effort into into authors, and there are definitely some good authors also in 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 uh, in Dutch uh, in the Dutch language. So, so more even than than for poets because poets yeah well it's nice but it won't get the publishing house uh, richer yeah you you don't just go into a bookshop and see what new poetry books are there while you would yeah. Yeah. bookshops i mean it, we have a yearly uh, a book fair in antwerp and the best sold books uh, are uh, Way up high are cooking books, mm-hmm. uh, all the different type of cookbooks and stuff like that. So perhaps poets should start writing cookbooks <laughs> first uh, to get sold better. Uh, but that, but that's it. And for the rest, you, yeah, you have a few books that are really marketed um, or get a, a prize uh, somewhere. And then you get some extra marketing, and via this type of marketing, a lot of uh, it, 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 it goes, and you have good critics and, and stuff like that. And, and, and then you get there. But with poetry, how the, 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 the bulk of the people still sort of think that poetry is not for them, eh? not even in, in, in. I wonder if, um, unless, yeah, this sort of calendar type of things. Uh, that most people don't even have a, a poetry book in the house. Eh? Sadly. Yeah, that's true. And how how do you view the future of poetry? Would you say it's it's a grim future, or do you see something that's gonna be great? I always see things that are going to be great. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I think poetry as such will 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 always survive because I mean, in what way or the other, if 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 yeah, 
poetry is there as a form, as a sort of almost encrypted form, not just of of feelings or as individual emotions, but also as a form of uh, society critics and whatever. So poetry will always exist. There will always be uh, uh, poetry written. Um, even, for instance, a lot of, of contemporary poetry has been put onto music and has become uh, more known as songs uh, or as the singer-songwriter or, or the rock star or whatsoever. Uh, some of I look at, at the work of David Bowie, for instance, or, or some of the work of Prince or um, um, Freddie Mercury, uh, whatever. I mean, some of the things are really sort of, you can do text analysis on it and whatsoever uh, from an academic point of view. So I think that poetry will always exist in, in one form or the other. Um, so your uh, your uh, poetry is is in is, is very close now. Are you are you nervous? I am. Uh, I'm always very nervous uh, for before the festival to make sure that because we ha- we have people coming from Japan, especially from the United States, from Switzerland, from Denmark, from from, from all over Europe also. So, I mean, yeah, definitely you're nervous to be sure that everything will run smoothly and that there won't be hiccups and that the strict timing for a lot of performances will be kept because uh, things need to be strictly timed because otherwise other events won't take place and stuff like that. Yeah, definitely I'm very nervous. <laughs> I'm seriously nervous, uh, but in a positive way because I mean, I, my principle is that nobody comes to the festival that at least I haven't seen. Uh-huh. Uh, um, so everybody who comes to the festival is there because her work or his work is, according to me, good. So, uh, for, and in that sense, I'm also nervous because, I mean, it's really my personal choice uh, or if we have a guest curator, the, 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 the personal choice of the guest curator, like now Heike Fiedler, for instance, uh, she brings a few people from Switzerland. Um, but, I mean, yeah, I, I think, and that's what, what, what in, in so few festivals, music festivals and, and, and whatsoever is done, that people, or uh, really the artistic people, organizing a festival that they don't know what they 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 uh, mm-hmm. they, they don't know personally what they have booked. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and my I, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, 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 no. I make a point out of it. I I I, I I'm not booking something that I haven't seen. Uh huh. So my my next question would be like if people would be interested in in taking part in the festival where could they reach you but obviously um you have to see them first uh they can always reach me and they can always sort of uh let me know where or what they are doing and 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 stuff like that and and uh, uh and if there is a possibility for me to see them um I hope always to see. I most of the people, like ninety five percent of the people I've seen, also live already. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also know that if I don't travel myself so much, uh, that there is a risk that that in the future um, I need to depend on on electronic forms of uh, of looking at the work of people. So, but they can always reach me. They can always propose something. Uh, there are always options via other festivals or whatsoever that that they could be sort of seen or known. Uh, next year will be completely so. 2017 uh, will be um, a celebration of Magritte because it's. Uh, a celebratory year here in Brussels due to the fact that it's 50 years that um, he died and they want to make a sort of special celebration around it, apparently. Um, so um, we will go Magritte next year. So, mm-hmm. so everybody who has work um, visually 
um, or as a performance poet that um, has any relation to uh, the work of Magritte or the surrealists um, are welcome to submit and to okay. to propose. Mm -hmm. Okay, wow. Uh, thank you very much. I think everyone had an awesome, awesome, awesome interview. What are your top three um, tips for people who want to get into festivals or who want to be on stage to perform their work? Wow, uh, that's a very difficult one. Uh, first, uh, if you want to be on stage, well, the top uh, tip is go on stage. Um, I know that in the States, uh, for a lot of poetry stages, or uh, you need to pay, but, I mean, it's worthwhile to do that uh, because you learn... Uh, to work with audiences, you learn to, to sort of yeah, to be with in front of the audience to better yourself, to better your performance. Um, and perhaps you will be exceptional at a certain moment and you get noticed and then you will get to, um, to a festival or to, to a paid uh, gig. Um, uh, never give up. Uh, it took me like about 20 years to get... 20 something years odd years that where to get where I'm now uh, at the beginning of a PhD in the arts uh, on uh, performance uh, of visual poetry so I mean um, you're never too old or uh, to start um, getting to festivals um, mostly is sort of like yeah getting to a first festival getting somewhere in a, at the first festival um, and think the world. Don't think like I want to be um, known in my village, uh, but why not India or China or Argentina mm -hmm. or whatsoever? I mean, try to... to yeah, to and and read also stuff of other people. Definitely read stuff of other people because you get better by reading. Yeah. So so do you think that if there's a poet that wants to succeed, that the world would be at his or her feet? Of course. As long as long as they try enough and, and work hard enough, I guess. You need to always work hard, and look look. Uh, listen, learn. Um, don't think that that um, that you're unique, even though if you are unique and most probably you are unique, uh, still don't think that you're unique. I mean, try to be modest and 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 listen and look and watch and read and learn from others. And then if you work hard and, yeah, at a certain moment you will be picked up. Yeah. And it's definitely, yeah, you, you will get somewhere. And there are sometimes stages that really give chances to people. And like I said, I go to, to, to stages and whatsoever. And if somebody sort of catches my attention... Definitely. Uh, then for me, this is sort of like uh, this person I want to work, and I will see how far and how much I can work, and 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 go uh, with this person. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Where would listeners be able to find more about you online or um, on social media? On social media, the like YouTube, Facebook. Uh, MySpace, even I know I'm an old guy. Um, <laughs> you uh, you uh, after the slash, eh, so you do whatever dot com slash spoon in my brain, and then you will find something of me. Otherwise, you can just Google my name. Um, and for the festival, it's just poetryfest dot brussels. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for the interview. It was very interesting, and I think a lot of people that are poets or are into poetry actually learned a lot today um, on or by the interview. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Okay, I will send you an email or I will contact you um, to give you the um, article when it's online. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Have a great night. Bye bye. Have a great night. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to rate and review the show. And tune in next Sunday for another episode of The Right Way Podcast.